Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I always, always, your squad knows that I always get stoked when I get to interview uh, a badass Midwesterner. <laughs> That's what my good friend Brett here is a spotlight on speaking. If you want to level up your speaking business and get noticed and really rock that stage, Brett's the guy who's going to drop some serious knowledge nuggets on you. You know, he's an eight time author and speaker in the book publishing speaker information marketing niches. He founded Speaker Fulfillment Services in 2003 as a frequent guest on virtual summits, podcasts, and live events on topics for authors and speakers. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to tell you how you can get your free special report from Brett as a gift to the, to the varsity squad out there of the three key things entrepreneurs must master to build a profitable speaking business. And Brett, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today podcast varsity squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? I'm a blue man, typically, Scott. Ah, so I, you know, I like I like your logo there, but I'm a I'm a blue man generally. Love it, love it. I'm looking at we were talking earlier. I'm looking at this thing. It's called the Atlantic right now, and I usually am podcasting. Man, that's kind of that's kind of like rub, that's rubbing it in, kind of. <laughs> I love it. You said it's 80 up there in Indiana today, buddy. So, no, I mean let's let's get to the roots. You know, I, I know that you're very well respected in the business. People search you out. Uh, to really level up that stage presence and, and their confidence and, and marketing themselves as well. But let's get to the roots and what kind of got you to there, please. You know, Scott, it's one of those stories where I would have never imagined that I'm at today where I'm at, but it's one of those things where you can trace A to B to C to D. But in, in a nutshell, back in the mid-90s, I actually put up the first portal website in the plant engineering and maintenance industry. So I was selling <sighs> books and VHS tapes and all that aimed at maintenance mechanics, plant engineers, hydraulic techs, et cetera. And during about the same time frame, so because I was selling products online almost 30 years ago, yeah. I had to develop processes for fulfilling those orders or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, around the same time frame, I had a joint venture with a guy named Carl Galetti where I took over his old hard-to-find marketing book catalog, and I put that online. But because of that joint venture, when Carl decided to do his first internet marketing super conference back in 1999, he called me up and asked me if I would handle the back sales table for him. Okay. Well, I honestly, Scott, I didn't even know what backroom sales meant at the time, but I hadn't <laughs> been to, I had not been to Las Vegas before. So it sounded good to me. So I said, <laughs> sure, I'm on board. And I remember that event where I was at the old Las Vegas Hilton in 99. And that kind of was my first foray into the speaking world behind the scenes. The back room, the back table, right? Where people Managing ran, the so back yeah. table. So yeah. I would I would provide the crew. I'd provide the merchant account that could handle a large sum of money in a short period of time. And I'd take care of paying the promoter and the speakers and all that stuff. And then we'd take a cut of the promoter's portion for managing that back of the room. So that first event led to a side business where over the course of the next, oh, 15 or so years, I probably managed the back of the room about 150 different events. Wow. And when when some of the speakers found out that I was doing product fulfillment for my own websites, they cornered me at an event. And I think it was actually one of Carl's events about 2002, 2003 and said, hey, Brett, will you take over some product fulfillment for me? Because it's not the best use of my time as a speaker. And I'd been thinking about it for a while because it's kind of a natural outgrowth of all the people I had gotten to know in the industry. Because, you know, when Internet and information marketing conferences first started coming out in the early 2000s, I mean, we were a major player in that arena, so I got to know most of the big names early on. So you name a name in the internet marketing space, and I probably know them personally and have done a lot of work for them. Wow. But when they found out that I was doing product fulfillment for myself, they quartered me and said, will you do something for me? And I said, sure. And so with another guy, I founded the company Speaker Fulfillment Services in 2003. And between that and my unique position in the back of the room, I saw probably... 2,000 different speakers in person over the next few years. Yeah. And I saw what they do well. And honestly, Scott, what they suck at and don't yeah, do so well. And I saw the speakers make mistakes that literally cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it, you know, it's one of those things where for a long time, I was happy being the backroom guy. That was my shtick, man. I was, you know, the mysterious man in the back, so to speak. Sure. You know, and I tend to be a naturally introverted person, but eventually I said, all right, Brett, you got to get up the gumption to get up on the stage yourself and share some of what you've learned along the way. So for the last few years, I've been getting on, you know, virtual summits and podcasts and all that, sharing some of the things that I've witnessed over time that will hopefully help aspiring speakers get to that next step. Wow. 
it, I love how it all kind of strung together. And you and I have such kind of parallel lines because I was that guy that was selling real estate, doing very well. And, but I was like, ah, there's, I want to do something when I'm sleeping. Right. So I started writing uh, like easing posts about a product that I'd find on JB zoo mm -hmm. or ClickBank. And I started selling online and it, it, it's gotten to the point now where I'm blessed that, you know, I have a whole room full of swag that companies send me now because of yeah. um, I'm blessed with the list I have and I do product reviews. So I get really cool free stuff and I'm able to uh, review it and put it on a stage. I love in that. So let me ask you something. What what do you feel then is, is one of the biggest mistakes that you saw in your experience of over probably 10,000 speakers in your lifetime? Because if you did 2,000 in just a couple of years, I'm sure you've in the five figures amount of speakers. What do you think is that biggest that biggest blind spot that they have? Well, you know, a couple of things come to mind, Scott. And, and and first of all, I think there are a lot of people out there that do have a powerful message they want to share with the world, but they just don't have the courage to step out there and do it. And honestly, mm -hmm. I should be doing, I should have been doing 10 years ago what I'm doing now. And that's helping people, you know, get at their speaking business going and all that stuff. So, you know, have the courage to step out there, get out of your comfort zone. And you're actually doing a disservice to people if you have something that will help others out and you're not getting out there and sharing that with them. Yes. So, you know, have the courage to do it first and foremost. Now Love I got to, I got to tell you a couple of stories. Though, yeah, please. Yeah. So specific mistakes. So we were managing the back of the room at a, an event a few years ago. I think it was in Atlanta and the speaker had the dream scenario for any platform selling speaker, the true table rush. I mean, people were literally at the back of the room throwing <laughs> their credit cards at us, you know, to, to order this guy's product. He had done a fantastic presentation, you know, a 90 minute presentation, and he was selling some type of uh, website development tool, a software tool, or whatever. When all was said and done, he had generated $375,000 worth of sales for his 90 minute talk. Mm -hmm. Now, even after you know the 50 50 split, which is typical in the speaking industry between the promoter and the speaker, yes, sir. He, he walked away with $187,000 plus for that 90 minute presentation. Well, you know, great, you say, every speaker would love to have that happen to them. Well, you know, what was not so great was that within 30 days, every single penny of that $375,000 had to be refunded to the attendees because the software tool that they were selling there for whatever reason had some type of bug in it that they could not figure out. Mm. So again, every single penny had to go back to the attendees. So not only was it a major embarrassment for the speaker, it was a massive hit to the pocketbook of the event promoter. And honestly, Scott, it didn't help my pocketbook out any any because either because you know we're taking a, a portion of the speaker's cut yeah. for hands in the back of the room. So the lesson there was if you're selling something something from the stage, you should never, in my opinion, sell something that's not fully developed, especially if it's a software tool. Yes. But even if it's a even if it's a training, I had another guy, we were doing an event in Vancouver. And he didn't do 375K, but he did had like $40,000 worth of sales on a training sure. he was going to deliver in a couple of weeks. So it's still nice for an hour and a half speech or something. Yeah, nothing right. to sneeze at, certainly. Yeah. Well, as it turned out, you know, two weeks development time turned into four, turned into six. And again, every single penny had to be refunded because he could not meet the timelines that had been promised to the attendees. So, I mean, I think there, I think it's okay to sell something from the stage, Scott, if you're going to be delivering a, you know, a webinar series in real time or yeah. whatever that you're recording or whatever. Yes, sir. But, but if you're promising a specific delivery date, whether it's a software or training, and you can't meet that or can't figure what that bug is, you're skating on very thin ice if that's what you want to sell from the platform. Wow. So, you know, $375,000 down the line. Done. Gone. Wow. Yeah, I 100% I agree. And I hate to admit this, you know, I've been speaking for a while. I don't have a product. Mm -hmm. I, people come to me really for you know one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's it's yeah. just my like, passion. But I'm gonna be getting there with some products and a book, you know, something for their swag bag. Because I found out one mistake I made, Brett, is that you know I show up and they'll pay me. Say they'll, they'll say, oh, you know, come up to Orlando because it's only two hours from me. You know, pay you five thousand yep. for your time. And what products do you have? Because we have like another fifteen hundred dollars we can give you for a product. You know, and I'm like, shit. so like, even my coach is like, write a freaking, so I got like a business parable kind of thing going <laughs> on right now. So it's like, that's a lesson that I've been learning. It's like, I'm leaving literally, literally like $40,000 a year yeah. on the table, you know, uh, from that. So let me ask you something, Brett, like, 
we maybe if you're working with somebody or they come to you for assistance, you're maybe in a discovery period. Is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? Well, you know, I, I think it boils down to the following, Scott. So mm -hmm. not a specific question, but when you're thinking about launching a speaking career, in my mind, there are three primary types of speakers. One is a keynote speaker that we're all familiar with that, you know, goes into a corporation or an association yes, and delivers a talk for 5,000 or 10 or 50,000 or whatever. Sure. Second is a platform selling speaker. So they're going to deliver content and then offer some type of continuing education in the back of the room. Okay. And then the third is the, what I just call the business builder speaker. And that is a person who is maybe they're a chiropractor and a, a financial planner. And right. they're just speaking to rotaries and all that to build awareness of their business, sure. hoping that people will come to them at some point in time for what it is they have to offer. Well, the, the first question that you should always ask yourself, and only, only you can determine this, Scott, is which type of speaker do I want to be? Do I want to be a keynote or do I want to be a yeah. platform seller? Do I want to be a business builder speaker or do I want to try to marry the, you know, all of them together? And I certainly know some speakers that have been able to very successfully marry them. do that. But, you know, they asked me, the question they asked me is, all right, Brett, what type of speaker should I be? Should I be a keynote or should I be a platform seller? And again, only you can determine what's best for you. Sure. But I, but I will tell you that if you can master the art of selling from the platform, you will make far more money as a platform seller than you ever will as a keynote speaker. I have a colleague, Scott, who did an event a few years ago in the UK, and in one 90-minute presentation, this will blow your doors off, did $995,000 worth of sales. Wow. One 90-minute presentation. Now, even after the 50-50 split with a promoter, I mean, he was walking away with nearly half a million dollars for his time. Now, right. obviously, he had expenses to travel to the UK and all that stuff, but I'm sure in a half a million dollars, he could probably cover those okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> Barely. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, granted, it was the right message to the right audience at the right time, and, and he did very well. And I certainly wouldn't want to promise to anybody that they're going to be able to emulate that particular scenario. But it's nice to know what's possible if you have the right environment and you have the skills to take advantage of that environment. So, Love it. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly trying to improve my platform selling skills all the time. Right. But again, you will make more money as a platform seller than you as a keynoter if you have to choose between one or the other. No, I appreciate that advice. Um, 100%. I, 100%. That, I, I'm weak on the selling part. I, I just am. And it's something that I'm working to level up uh, on my side of my side yeah. of things. Because like I, I really am not set up yet to be that rushed table. You know, I still yeah. get approached a lot, you know, for... Mm -hmm other speaking engagements or, you know, for uh one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, I got, I do talk about that because I have offer a free hour of power to people uh, where I give them a, you know, a powerful coaching conversation. Uh, and and so, anything you do from the stage, Scott, needs to be congruent with your own, you know, your own guidelines, your own morals, whatever. I mean, yeah. if it's not comfortable selling from the platform, then go for the keynote speaker route or whatever. But, you know, I will tell you that, you know, if you're going to become a keynote speaker, you know, we've all heard of speaker bureaus probably, and there are yes, obviously sir. organizations that represent speakers to organizations, and they take typically a 25 to 30 percent cut of your fee for getting right. you the gig. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was talking to a person on my podcast the other day and asked, you know, do you use speaker bureaus? And she's a pretty successful keynote speaker, and she mm -hmm. doesn't basically use them at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I find it very interesting. You know, it, it's kind of like bankers, Scott, you know. Speakers agencies are, are are interested in you when you probably don't really need them. Like the bank, you know, wants to give you a loan when you don't really need the money. <laughs> right. So yeah. I, I was actually, on, I was researching this a couple of weeks ago. I was on a, a one speaker bureau's website and they mm -hmm. bragged about having vetted over 16,000 different speakers for their site. Yeah. Well, I dug into their site and they only had like 400 of them listed. So even though you were vetted, you had like a 2.8% chance of even being featured to right. the group. I don't and use them, bro. I don't yeah. use them. Yeah. And of course, speaker bros are going to want to represent the high ticket features sure. oh, absolutely. because they want, you know, they want that 30% of a $50,000 fee, not a $5,000, right. $2,000 fee. So, you know, until Beautiful. you get your rates up there, speaker bros probably aren't the greatest fit. Right. So, but... Who would if you know? Let's say I'm pressing flash at a networking event or something, and you know I'm I'm a like you. I'm kind of an introvert. Like I, I'm good around people, but mm -hmm. I also like my alone time. And when I meet 
you would go to events. I like to meet, say, I have Brett. I pull you to the side and I find out everything about you. That's just, I'm curious. It's my superpower, right? Oh, man, I'm scared. So <laughs> let me ask you something. Like, it, what kind of keywords might someone I'm that I'm talking to be speaking to make them a good prospect referral for for your you know your services? What might they be saying to me? Well, I, I think the first thing you need to recognize, Scott, is that this business, like any business, is all about relationships. Yep. And if you go into any not networking opportunity with the mindset of what's in it for me, then people are going to see through that and you're not going to be successful. You truly have to go with the mindset of, there giving, you go, buddy. of giving them what can I do for them. And then you'll get an opportunity later on to share what you do and all that stuff. But right. if you're going with the like, all right, what can they do for me? And then in 10 seconds, I'm deciding whether they're worth my time or not. Right. Then you're going to fail miserably. Right. So it's, it's about relationships. I mean, yes. the fulfillment company grew to a several million dollar organization because strictly of relationships. People I met at events became clients, became referral partners. There wasn't Love any it. proactive advertising being done. It was all about Love relationships. It. Right. So that, that's you know, the key in my mind. You know, I love I love that you said that. And the, the biggest compliment to me at a networking event or anywhere is when I walk away and I always have, I try to get their business card and I always have thank you notes in my car, right? In my car. I write yeah. them out. Uh, I drop them in the mail before I even get home. Now, the biggest compliment to me is when people are like, what the hell do you do? <laughs> you know, they don't know. They have no yeah. idea what I do. Because I'm more interested in your story than telling you mine. Yeah. God gave me two ears and one mouth for a reason, man. You know what I'm saying? I love that. You and I are like so aligned. Man, but, I'm right there with you, Scott. I, I mean, know you are. So many people are. just love to talk about themselves. Yeah. And I'm a big proponent of the thank you notes, too. I mean, yeah. I'm, sitting, I'm sitting here writing. I've been involved with the fundraiser this weekend. So I'm yeah. just sitting there writing 60 handwritten thank you notes this morning to sponsors <laughs> and all that stuff. So, well, well just a cat, just. just you know, full disclosure, you'll get a thank you note right after, you know, handwritten by me <laughs> after this. My clients, I literally get texts after. They take pictures of it. They post it on their socials. Like, people do this. That makes me feel so good. But, Brett, let me ask you something. Have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Oh, sure. All right. Let's go back in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the double deuce, the 22-year-old Brett. Okay. Not, I don't want you to change anything, but what kind of knowledge nuggets would you drop on him maybe to – shorten his learning curve I mean, blast through and level up in life in general maybe just a little faster but not change so much your journey has been pretty awesome yeah i you know gosh you go back to that time frame you know i think the thing that everybody should do much earlier in life and this includes me going back to the 20 sure. or whatever is work hard to develop both their communication skills, getting comfortable being speaking to people and being in front of audiences, all that, overcoming stage fright or whatever you want to call it, as well as developing good writing skills, communication skills. So, you know, emails, notes, whatever you need to write, yeah. you can do that in a way that truly gets your message across and, and resonates with folks so that they want to come and be involved in your world. So de developing your oral written communication skills are something I think should be emphasized far earlier for everybody love it i love it so brett how how do you want your dash to remember that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date your life date and death date hopefully it's way down the road but how does brett want his dash to remember you know i just want to remember scott for a person that did as much good as possible i mean so you know it's not about me it's about who i've helped along the way and, and that people recognize those efforts i've actually been the grand knight for the knights of columbus here in town for six years really I, you know, uh -huh. I've been president of Optimus International Club here locally that we just did the fundraiser for for a number of years. So I spend a lot of time on, on charity events and trying to give back. I mean, my kids are growing all that now. So, you know, the focus is on, all right, now what can you do to give back to others because you've been so blessed your whole life. So I, I spend a lot of time on that, honestly. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. And like those Zig used to say from the stage all the time, you know, we can get anything we want by helping other people get everything they want, right? Love it. And so, Brett, what do you think people might misunderstand the most about you? Oh, my gosh. You know, since I'm a natural introverted person, Scott, I do have to, you know, step <laughs> I, into I, a I, role. You were, I knew this. I knew this was coming, brother. 
You know, I do. I do have to step into a role when I'm getting on a show or when I'm getting yeah. on stage, whatever, because it's stepping outside my normal comfort zone. Yeah. So when I when I'm meeting new people for the first time, I may not be as outgoing initially as I probably <laughs> you should see be. It. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro! So. You and I are like brothers from different mothers, man. Because <laughs> when people meet with me, they're like, "Where's that crazy dude that was on stage that has everybody <laughs> rocking and, and stuff?" You know, I've been blessed to speak with Tony right a few times, and I get a lot of that and and whatnot and he's helped me um yeah. and, and, but they meet me they're like and i'm just like hey how you doing i give i'm from the midwest i give hugs you know they're just like what <laughs> you know so you and i are just so much alike i love this so brett what is your definition of a life well lived a person that gave far more to others than they took for themselves love it yeah I'm taking notes on that. And you, Squad, you need to be taking notes on these too as, as well. <laughs> and Squad, with that, we're going to take Brett through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today. Podcast Versity Squad, we are back. And Brett, we're going to meet 100% guaranteed. We're going to meet in the flesh. And we'll probably maybe even sit down and have a beverage or a meal and talk about some of these questions I'm going to ask you. And we can talk 15, 20 minutes then. But today, you got five seconds with no explanations, and they can all be done that way. You ready, brother? All right, let's do let's it. Let's level up. Brett, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Network, network, network. Yes. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Discipline. Yes. <laughs> so if you see me, like, walking in an event or just walking around, you're like, man, Fergie looks like he's in his doldrums. Outside of any of your books you've authored, what book might you hand me to help me level up? Mm. Uh, I'm going to go back to a classic. Uh, yeah. Bob Burke, Endless Referrals. Dude, I have Bob Burke's Five Laws of Stratospheric Success, and he lives six doors down. I love that guy. <laughs> love it. He lives right here, man. I love it. Love it. Your most commonly used emoji when you text? Uh, thumbs up. Love it. Nicknames growing up? Oh, gosh. You know, Brett Brat. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So what is any, if if any, is your hidden talent or superpower nobody knows about? Oh, good. I am uh, one hell of a good copywriter. Love it. Chess checkers or Monopoly? Checkers. Me too, dude. <laughs> we're, we're too love it. Uh, headline for your life. One line headline for your life. A life well lived. Yes. Go to ice cream flavor. Oh gosh. Got to go chocolate. There you go. There's a sandwich called the Brett Brat. Build that sandwich yeah. for me. Bratwurst sauerkraut. <laughs> Yeah, big, big big hot heated bun, maybe even a little melty cheese underneath the hot dog. Yes, underneath the yes. broth, the broths, baby. Favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Uh, Knights of Columbus and Optimus International. Beautiful. Last question: We can elaborate a little bit on this one because I'm curious with you. Like, what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 70s. Yeah, I love the 70s. You know what? If you want to be a good speaker. I'm going to tell you right now, I was told this by a salty dog speaker. The guys did thousands, hundreds of thousands of speeches, probably. I don't know. Just a ton. He's like, listen to 70s music because they tell stories. You, yeah. you could pull stuff out of the 70s. You know, I'm a, I graduated in 1990, so 80s is kind of my jam, like, through that. <laughs> but, like, in the 70s, brother, it's like I do. And my mom, who unfortunately passed away, and my dad, you know, they would always play. I would always hear Seeger or the Eagles or, you know, something like that, you know. And I just... I get a lot of my, you know, people go to chat GPT now to get ideas for their writing. I go to the seventies. Yeah. I'm, I'm so happy that you said huh. that, man. I love yeah, it. So, well, you know, it's when I graduate from high school and college, you know, yeah. it's the music I listen to is a seventies station. I mean, most people don't know I was a runner in my younger days. So I ran competitively all the way through college and, wow. you know, so it's just lots of good memories of, you know, That's teams cool. and all that stuff going yeah. back to the time frame. So love it. Love it. So how can we find you, my friend, my friend? All right. Well, the best thing to do is uh, brettridgeway.com, and that's Brett with one T, Ridgeway without an E.com. 
Okay. Or you can email info at bridgeway.com and uh, would love to chat with anybody that uh, would like to chat. And I, I love it. And, and again, squad, that's there's no E. There's one T and, and no E in his name. So it's B-R-E-T-R-I-D-G-W-A-Y.com. And Brett, can, oh, you know what? I'm going to do something for you, squad. I'm going to be the first person that puts Brett Brott in anything <laughs> on social. I don't care if it's LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, anywhere. I'm going to buy the book, uh, How to Build a Profitable Speaking Business, 21 Tips for Taking Your Speaking Business to the Next Level. When it comes out later this year, I'm going to have that book, and then I'm going to ask Brett to uh, you know, sign it for you. Maybe you can take care of that postage for me, Brett? Well, I always should tell you, if you go to brettridgeway.com right now and click on the books link, you can get author signed copies right on my site right now. It's not released beautiful. on Amazon until the end of the year, but you can get some via the site. Oh, right beautiful. Now. That's how I'll buy it. That, that'll be great. I will uh, take care. Actually, I'll take care of the first three people um, on that book. So I want to get this book out there and you really want to read it. And Brett, if you could do me one solid, one last solid and leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize and take action on. I'm going to I'm going to revert back to something I touched on earlier, Scott, and that is if you have a message that you need to share with the world, get out of your fear, step out of your comfort zone and get that message out there. Don't be afraid to put yourself front and center so that you can positively influence others in your world. Love it. I love it. And squad, we just had a really super fun conversation with someone that I immensely respect. They'll help you level up your speaking business. So he was ahead of the curve. And online marketing. It's kind of like a man of, of my genes as well as I kind of was as well when I would write on articles.com and and, and e-zine and, and whatnot and, and sell product. It was just beautiful. And, you know, he, he wanted to make sure that he wants you to know that there's three types of speakers. You know, there, there's keynote, platform selling, and business building. But he will tell you that if you can master that platform selling, which Brett can teach you in his books and in his one-on-ones, he can get you there. So make sure that if you're going to start speaking, which I need to level this up big time as well, master that platform spelling, uh, selling. And anything you do from stage, he reminds us that it must be congruent with your morals and strengths. People can pick out a fraud from a mile away. So stick to what you feel, okay? You know, work hard all the time if you're a budding speaker, even if you're a polished speaker, to develop better communication skills and also good writing skills as well, because you're going to be sending things back and forth to people and whatnot and the messages that you provide. And he's going to be remembered as someone that, I say that, you know, Brett's planting trees, he's never going to sit in the shade of. You know, he's a person, he <laughs> wants to be remembered as a person that did as much good as possible, you know, and someone that gave far more to others than he took from them. But the reciprocation is going to come to him anyways. And, you know, if you really know deep inside, you have a message to get out. You know, stretch that comfort zone. You don't have to just pop right out. Remember, squad, with my coaching, inch by inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. So stretch that coaching zone, right? Get front and center. Get with somebody like Brett that can really help. Let me make a warm introduction to you. Like someone like that can really help you level up your life. And he, if he can't, he probably knows someone he can. You know, he levels up his health. He levels up his wealth. He's hungry. He's humble. He's earned his varsity squad letter here at Time to Shine today. Thank you so much for coming on, Brett. I absolutely love your guts, brother. Scott, my pleasure, sir. Excellent. Chat soon.